U.B. Blake just sat down at the piano bench uh, here on our stage. He's a remarkable gentleman by any standards. He's 90 years old, a practicing musician. Um, is in concerts. Uh, he'll be appearing with the Boston Pops in Boston on the 27th of this month at Carnegie Hall on July 7th as part of the Newport Jazz Festival. And I would guess nobody has been around or knows more about jazz than U.B. Blake. Would you welcome, please, U.B. Blake. And the first number, and the first number is Troublesome Irish. Boy, and I mean it's troublesome, too. <laughs> Well, you're looking good. How do you feel? Oh, I feel like a boy 22. Yeah? You know why I don't say 21? Why? Lee Whipper told me one time, I saw him on the <coughs> corner 138th Street, 139th Street and 7th Avenue. How do you feel, Lee? Feel like a boy 21. And went right home and fell out, see? Really? Yeah. So? <laughs> and, and, wait a minute. <laughs> and, 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 his, and his son says... <laughs> Fell out. He's lying down there. His son says, Pop, what you doing down there? <coughs> he says, I don't know. I met UB. And I was talking to UB. And that was about 3 o'clock in the day, I remember. Mm -hmm. He says, uh, uh, and I don't know what I'm doing to Say, for God's sake, don't tell UB Blake I fell out. Don't tell yeah. him. Because he'll have it all over the country. Yeah. He's 97 years old. 97? <laughs> You were, uh, Tony was talking about you smoking since you were six years old. Now, you told me your mother was very strict. Did she know you smoked? Would you sneak she, them? Did she'd you? knock ten packs of cigarettes down my throat. Backhand. If she knew you smoked, huh? <laughs> I've been... I've, Backhanded. I've been, <laughs> whenever she see, catch me smoking, she had the best left hand. I wish I had the left hand like it. Pow! Down on the floor. And that was it. Never miss. Never miss. <laughs> <coughs> Did you fight a lot as a kid? Did you have oh, in your neighborhood? Yeah. Well, you know, I was raised in uh, the come up the ghetto. Right. And uh, if you didn't fight, I wouldn't be here to tell you today because those that didn't fight the dead, see? Yeah. Fight all the time. I used to fight so many, I got tired of fighting. See? <laughs> and. Uh, I, I had to pass two white schools to get to my school, see? And three or four. Don't think I won the fights now. I didn't yeah. win them all. I won a lot of them. I hit guys in the stomach, man. Oh, I guess I don't. And they say, here comes Mouse. Mouse? I, yeah, that's what they call me then. Don't call it to me now. Oh, I, why did they call you Mouse? Well, uh, the guy named Harry Bond, you didn't let me tell the other story. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> My mind is going so yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm glad you got it this time. 
<laughs> so they say, uh, they said, that, oh, I'm back to the yeah. three boys. Okay. Uh, here comes Mouse, let's hit Mouse. And I'd wait till I get up close, see? Now, I was, I could play the organ when I was a kid, see? Not the pipe organ, trumpet. And they, I'd say, now don't hit me now. And I'd get close, bam, right in the stomach. And when they fall, I'd kick them, see? <laughs> I had the worst, quite the worst reputation in the world. But I wasn't the worst guy in the, yeah. in the plot. You had to fight. Just self-preservation. Yeah, I had to fight. All bar, all bar fighters say the best thing is right, a yeah. short one right well, into the see, solar plexus. They taught me how to hit, you know. You know how to hit anybody? Look, see that? See that? Yeah. Wham! And take your whole body. You're getting two for right one. Right into yeah. it. Yeah. Two for one. Lay your right body. Right. Yeah. And when they fall, that, that was it. Real good shot. Oh, yeah. You still practice every day? Three hours. Listen, my, I, you know, my wife is my manager, you know. Mm. She is the toughest woman I've ever seen. <laughs> Why don't you give her one of those short ones? <laughs> no, oh. I couldn't lick a little girl now. <laughs> she said, exercise, play. I said, all right, I play. Three hours, you know. Playing ragtime is hard, you know. You swing your left hand. And if I get tired, I do <laughs> play the piano. Play the piano, and I gotta play three hours every day. I, I'm sick of looking at those dogs. <laughs> I've been, you know, I've been playing piano for my living seventy-two years. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Are you listening? Yeah, well, listening. laugh. <laughs> 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 Can you see, can you see you on your nighty putting your lips around that horn? You're gonna be pretty tired of that too. I was gonna gum hell out of it. <laughs> Did you ever ever think of doing anything else in your life? You I always never, wanted... I have never lifted anything, leaving out my handbag uh, when I'm traveling. Right. Nothing less heavier than a lead pencil in my life. Right. I've never, I used to ride horses when I was a kid. Did you really? Oh well, yeah, I was exercise boy. I didn't know that. And, uh, was a man I used to work for. He's drunk all the time. He's mm. at the racetrack, see? Yeah. And he had his chin measured with his body, see? And uh, he at the horse used to used to have a, there were concrete stables when they first put him in. You got fifteen dollars a month. I ain't never got a quarter out of the races in my life. See? Yeah. And this horse is named Charlie Eastman. When I come in, you know, he would lean up on me like that, mash me up against this. Uh, you know that safety pin they put the blanket on? Grape it. I got one of them straighten it out. <coughs> now, you're supposed to speak. You're supposed to speak to a horse before you walk in the stable. I wouldn't say nothing to him. <laughs> and when he leaned this time, he leaned right on that pin, see? <laughs> and he jumped. Now, you gotta walk the horse around, you know? I walked him around, and the guy left there. He said, what's the matter that horse, boy? I said, I don't know, sir, I don't know, sir. And he pat him all around, he pat him on his hip, the horse jumped. He says, you did something to that horse. I said, no, sir, I did not. I said, I didn't touch it. I'm going to whip you. And I used to whip these white boys, jockeys, Hinchcliffe and Guy Burns and those boys. You don't know these jockeys. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I would, uh, and he told me he's gonna whip me. Yeah. Now I know white people are afraid of knives and things. I ain't never had no knives. Yeah. I said, if you ever hit me, I'm gonna cut your throat <laughs> and, and defy it. That would, yeah, that would do it, all right. We'll be right back. That'd slow you down. This is the album of some early, rare recordings of Noble Cecil and Hubie Blake. I think you'll enjoy it. Thanks for being with us again tonight. We'll see you soon.
Tony, thank you. Thank you, madame. Tomorrow night, E.G. Marshall, Buddy Rich, Charles Roden, Mike Preminger, and Lillian Williams. Good night.